Now, obviously there's gotta be a better way. <laughs> we do have a better way to add vectors. We have U here is in capital or else you could say U with a little line over the top. And this, notice that the, they're not parentheses around the negative three and negative two or the four and negative six. That's another vector notation where the negative three is really the horizontal and negative two is really the vertical. If I wanted to know, it says compute each of the following and represent the results graphically. So for A, all I'm going to do, it's very simple. I'm just really going to distribute. If I want to multiply that vector times a constant, I'll get 6, 4. And that literally is my vector. So if I wanted to represent the results graphically, I could start here and move one, two, three, four, five, six to the right and up four. One, two, three, four. This vector right here is six comma four. Again, it doesn't matter where I start. It just matters that it's going six in the positive X direction and four in the positive Y direction. And for B, it's the same. So we have one half, v, four comma negative six. This is equal to two comma negative three. And again, if I want to represent this graphically, um, I, if I start here, then I would go two to the right and down three. So this vector, literally looks like that. And then C, I would just add them together. Well, we already know what negative two U is. It's just six, four. And we know what one half V is. It's two, negative three. And we just add the X's and add the Y's. So if we add them together, we get eight, comma, one. And if I attach those vectors together, I'm going two, down three, two, three, and over two. And then remember, this is my solution. Well, let's see exactly what that last vector looks like as far as distance is concerned. I'll do it with a highlighter. We're going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's actually only going up one. It's the same geometrically as it is algebraically. It, it would create the same vector. For a position vector V, now we're talking about putting a vector in a certain location because here we notice it says position. So we're going to start it somewhere because then it's easier for us to keep track of. I have vector AB, sometimes I'll refer to it as AB, sometimes XY. I think it's easier for us as XY since we're used to that. If we have that vector and we make a triangle, let me just make a triangle out here and I'll call this A and I'll call this B and I'll call this the magnitude of the vector. The magnitude of the vector is just the length of the vector. If I have this as my theta, then the magnitude of B, well, we have a Pythagorean identity here, right? We can say A squared plus B squared is equal to V squared. If I want the magnitude, I take the square root and that gives me the magnitude of vector V. And I'm gonna put a, a like a little vector thing above it so that we know it's a vector. And if I'm given a b, then if all I'm given is a and b and I don't want to find the magnitude of v, then I can say that the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite over over the adjacent. If I 
want theta. And remember, this is always make it positive and just find the reference angle. And then after that, place it in the appropriate quadrant. That's really the best way to do it. Especially, look, if I had both negative A and negative B, they would cancel here. How would I know if I was in quadrant one or quadrant three? I wouldn't know. I'd have to know more about it. That gives us these two. And again, if I go back to this triangle here at the bottom, and I want to know what the sine of theta is, the sine of theta is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse, which if I multiply both sides by the magnitude of V, I get the magnitude of V times the sine of theta is equal to V. Or if you'd like, Y. And the cosine of theta is equal to A over the magnitude of V, the magnitude of V times cosine of theta is going to equal a or what we might call x. I have these two vectors. It says graph each vector and name the quadrant where it is located. I'll start off with an xy coordinate. Okay, so graph each vector. So v1 is negative 2.5, negative 6. Right around here would be from our origin to that dot, this right here is vector V1. And then V2 is three times the square root of three. The square root of three is like 1.7. So it's like 5.1-ish. Let's say 5.1. Two, three, four, five. That's five point one. Up three. One, two, three. Let's say it's right around there. This now is vector two, check, okay? We know V2 is in quadrant one, and we know V1 is in quadrant three, right? And we could tell before we even graphed it because of the signs of each of the values. Find their magnitudes. Do you have any idea how to find their magnitudes? The length of that line is the magnitude. We made a triangle, right? And we know that this triangle has some properties. We know that this is 2.5, the length of it. And we know the length of this line here is six. So we can just use a Pythagorean theorem. We say negative 2.5 squared plus negative six squared is equal to the magnitude of V squared. I think that would be 6.25 plus 36. And I can take the square root of both sides and then I get just the magnitude of the vector. We get the square root of 42.25. So this is the magnitude of vector one. And again, the same thing if we wanted to find the magnitude of vector two, because we know this is height of three, and we know this is three times the square root of three. So we just, again, use the Pythagorean theorem and we can find V2. For C, instead of finding the magnitude, I'll find the angle. If I call this theta, I can say that the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. This actually becomes tangent of theta equals one over the square root of three, that our reference angle would be equal to the inverse tangent of uh, negative six over negative 2.5 which is just going to give me a positive value. I really just want to keep everything positive. That would give me my reference angle. Since I know it's in quadrant three, I would add that reference angle, to, and this is in degrees, so always check, 
So I add this reference angle, this is equal to 67.4 degrees. That is my reference angle. So that means my theta is gonna equal 67.4 plus 180 or 247.4. I can do this one without a calculator. And I do feel like it's easier because remember, we talked about making this one half and this the square root of three over two, where the top is the sine and the bottom is the cosine. What is my angle? And remember, this is in degrees. What would my angle be where the sine is one half and the cosine is the square root of three over two? We have 30 degrees. And I think I found everything that I need to find for that.